Good evening, members. Welcome to this digital annual meeting of Caerphilly County Borough Council being held via Microsoft Teams on Thursday, the 13th of May, 2021. Mrs. Harry, can I ask you to confirm the proceedings of the meeting, please? Thank you, Mayor. And Noswetha Kangor. Good evening, members. We will not be live streaming this evening's meeting. However, it will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals present and or speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www.cafilli.gov.uk. If members lose connection during the live meeting, please make every attempt to reconnect. However, the meeting will continue as long as it remains quiet. Democratic services staff are available and will be able to assist you to reconnect if necessary. I wish to also remind everyone that the mayor has the discretion to terminate or suspend recording if, in her opinion, continuing to do so would prejudice the proceedings or that continued recording might infringe the rights of the individual. The mayor also has the right to remove persons from the remote meeting if deemed necessary. All members should have already checked their headphones, microphones and IT equipment before the meeting commenced. I wish to also remind members and officers to ensure that all microphones have been muted. Group leaders, deputy leaders and cabinet members and key officers have been asked to leave their cameras on. All other members and officers, can I ask you please to turn off your cameras unless making representations. Members will need to unmute their microphones and turn on their cameras when called to speak by the mayor. Votes this evening will be taken using Microsoft Forms. When a vote is required, the monitoring officer will direct members to either the on-screen pop-up box or to open show conversation where the form will appear mm. and then click on yes, no or abstain. And then finally click on submit vote. The names and votes, votes cast this evening will be recorded and published to our website following the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Harry. We'll move on to the agenda. Item one is apologies for absence. As detailed within the meeting conversation or chat, if members are aware of any apologies not listed, please add them to the chat or notify Democratic Services. Item two, declaration of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's constitution and the code of conduct for both councillors and officers. Members, please use the hands up function to indicate if you have any such declarations. Councillor Simmons, please. Sorry, Chair, I was going to say it's, it's about the uh, apologies for absence. Can we just go back to that? Uh, Councillor Bezina sends her uh, apologies. She'd also like it known that she'd like to thank everybody who supported her recently through a very difficult time. I've been in touch with Carmen quite a lot recently and obviously she's having a bad time. So if we could just remember Carmen as well, please, if that's OK. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Any other interests, please? No, OK, thank you. We'll move on to item three, and that's to note that the mayor and deputy mayor had been appointed until the annual meeting in 2022 and the payment of a senior salary. On behalf of Councillor Gale and myself, we thank you for allowing us to continue as mayor and deputy. So noted. Item four is the mayor's remarks. Remarks, sorry. It is a continued honour to serve as Mayor of Caerphilly Borough during this unprecedented time. I would like to thank the elected members again for their ongoing support to continue in this role until next year. I would also like to thank the Chief Executive, Mrs Harry, officers and staff for their continued efforts during these challenging times. Special thanks to Joy Thomas for her support to the Civic Office over the years and I wish her well in her new post. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 restrictions, there have been few mayoral duties. Since September, I've attended two face-to-face -face -to -face events, one which was a banner unveiling at Caerphilly Castle and the Santa Appeal photo shoot at Pontland Fright Leisure Centre, and two virtual events, 
which were the Lord Lieutenant's Awards and the first Abercorn Scouts AGM. I've also recorded several video messages to accompany the 10 bouquets and cards delivered by Mark, four of each for the diamond and golden wedding anniversaries, plus two 100th birthdays. This is breaking news and I haven't prepared anything to say, um, but this afternoon I have heard as dementia champion that the Greater Bargard area has been um, accredited with official status of working towards being a dementia friendly community. So uh, I thought I'd share that with everybody today. And hopefully as restrictions ease, mayoral duties will resume during the forthcoming months. I'd also like to extend my thanks to Councillor June Gale for serving as my Deputy Mayor and who attended a Requiem Eucharist service at New Newport Cathedral following the death of HRH Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, on my behalf. I'm looking forward to the year ahead and the promise it brings with it. Thank you. On to item five, to note the appointment of a leader of council and note the payment of a senior salary. Members, please note that Councillor Philippa Marsden is leader of, of council and will receive the payment of a senior salary. So noted. Item six is to note the appointment of a deputy leader and the payment of a senior salary. Councillor Marsden, can I ask you to confirm the appointment, please? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Members, please note that Councillor Sean Morgan is at my appointment for deputy leader and will receive the payment of a senior salary. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. That appointment is so noted. On to item seven. To note the number of members to be appointed to the Cabinet, the names the leader has chosen to become members of the Cabinet and their portfolios, and the payment of senior salaries. Councillor Marsden, can I ask you to confirm your appointments, please? Thank you, thank you once again, Mayor. Members, with myself, there will be nine Cabinet members with the following portfolios and will receive a senior salary payment. Councillor Sean Morgan, Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Economy, Enterprise and Infrastructure. Councillor Colin Gordon, Cabinet Member for Corporate Services. Councillor Elena Stenner, Cabinet Member for Customer, Performance and Property Services. Councillor Ross Whiting, Cabinet Member for Learning and Leisure. Councillor Shane Cook, Cabinet Member for Social Care. Councillor Andrew Whitcomb, Cabinet Member for Sustainability, Planning and Fleet. Councillor Lisa Phipps, Cabinet Member for Housing. Councillor Nigel George, Cabinet Member for Waste, Public Protection and Street Scene. Um, can I take this opportunity also to thank, uh, very much thank Councillor John Ridgewell uh, for his fantastic contribution uh, since the last uh, annual council, whereby he served as a Cabinet Member uh, with portfolio for um, street scene and uh, highways and many other things. And I just want to say thank you very much, John, for your time served on Cabinet and also welcome Andrew Whitcomb to the Cabinet. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Those appointments are noted. <laughs> Item eight, to note the appointment of a leader of the main opposition group and the payment of a senior salary. Members, please note that Councillor Mann is leader of the main opposition group and will receive the payment of a senior salary. So noted. Item nine, the leader's statement. Councillor Marsden, as leader of the council, can you please make your statement to council? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Members, this is the second annual general meeting of council where I have addressed you in this virtual way, rather than being alongside you in the council chamber. I know that many of you prefer traditional <laughs> meetings, but I think we all accept and recognise that coronavirus has resulted in a societal shift in the way we do business. Hopefully, when conditions allow, we will be able to reconvene a few face-to-face -face meetings. But like it or not, this technology is here to stay. Let's not forget that we are an innovative and forward-looking council, so let's embrace change, lead the way and make this technology work for us. Mayor, the AGM always, always provides a good opportunity for us to pause and reflect on where we are in that moment. As you know, we recently marked the anniversary of the first national lockdown and it's useful to use significant occasions like this evening's meeting to take stock and consider what we've collectively achieved over the last year. 
first and foremost, I want to remember all those who have lost their, we've lost to this terrible virus since the start of the pandemic. I'm sure, like me, you will all know families whose lives have been changed forever due to the loss of a loved one. Our thoughts and prayers are with you all. Public services have been at the forefront of the coronavirus response, and I'm so proud to lead this local authority and to witness the efforts of staff at every level across the organisation. I'm sure you will join me in thanking our dedicated workforce for their unwavering professionalism and commitment to the community. They are a credit to us all. We have witnessed our organisation rally and respond to the needs of our local community to provide support, protection and key services during one of the most difficult periods in our history. I truly believe this, that adversity brings out the best in us and the coronavirus outbreak has brought out the very best of Team Caffili. I am proud of each and every one of our employees and, as, and of you as elected members who have worked so hard to support residents and protect our community. Throughout the pandemic, we have strived to do the right thing for our residents, all with a social heart. Place the health of our colleagues at the heart of all we do. Listen to what our communities need and responded. Show strong, visible leadership across the organisation and within our communities. Be open and honest with our colleagues and residents. Work closely with our trade union partners. Maintain our Team Caffili ethos where everyone is valued and has an important role to play. And let's not forget, our mantra is to be bold, be brave and be brilliant. Right at the start of the outbreak, we mobilised an army of staff in a very short time frame to provide a coordinated community response to ensure that the most vulnerable people in our society were supported during very uncertain and worrying times. I believe that this council has led the way in Wales, standing up for what we believe in, for our free school meal service, our community response and our buddy scheme. We must also shine a light on the additional cornerstones of our response in providing excellent school hubs for the children of key workers and our ongoing support for businesses. There is much to be proud of and it is only right that we use this evening to highlight and celebrate these achievements. Because our key focus over the past year has been on the coronavirus response, it can be easy to forget about all the other amazing things we've achieved together as an authority. So if I may, I will highlight some of our achievements. We are progressing major investment proposals totaling 231 million as part of our place shaping programme, signalling an exciting blueprint for the whole borough. We are giving the green light for the next phase of our 21st century schools programme, which will result in an impressive enhancements for Trinity Fields and Cum Guidon. We announced a zero cut budget for 2021-22 together with one of the lowest council tax rises in Wales. We are nearing the completion of our £200 million programme of bringing our council properties to the Welsh housing quality standard, whilst also developing a brand new council house building initiative. We supported our tenants in claiming additional income in excess of £2.5 million. We are transforming our buddy scheme into a sustainable model called Caffili Cares. We are recruiting 13 new foster carers with a further 19 applications in progress, the highest number for some years. Our library service met all 12 of the Welsh Government's core entitlements for the first time. We are embracing the use of electric vehicles and installing public electric vehicle charging points at 11 council owned car parks. We have approved a package of investment in sporting facilities, including a brand new running track and several sport pitch upgrades. We are endorsing V-Generation Master Plans, which were developed in partnership with our communities. We have received national recognition for our communications, digital services, procurement and planning teams. We are strengthening our Team Caffili ethos with positive feedbacks from residents and colleagues alike in our recent surveys. I could go on, but you all know the numerous success stories that we have achieved or that we are currently developing to help support, transform and regenerate our communities. So looking ahead, we've got a busy agenda over the next 12 months and we will deliver wide ranging improvements for our people and our place. Again, let me highlight some of the examples from our forward work programme, which include strengthening our senior management structure, driving the Team Caffili transformation agenda, implementing our place shaping investment programme, reviewing our waste strategy, 
continuing our ongoing COVID response and recovery plans, leading the regional social care agenda, progressing our exciting plans for the Nestar site in Kofili, and also our WHQS completion, our housing strategy agreement and implementation, including new council house building. And let me repeat that because this is significant, new council house building. Extending our 21st century schools programme with five exciting projects to progress, continue on our school recovery improvement programme alongside the EAS, resolving single sex surplus places in the Upper Rumney Rally, development of our IT services to facilitate change. Last but not least, agree in the 22-23 budget. As you can see, we have some key projects ahead, but I know you are all certainly up for the challenge. There is so much positivity for us to celebrate, and let's not forget that before the coronavirus pandemic, this council had been dealing with a number of significant issues that left us somewhat battered and bruised as an organisation. But like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Kafili is well and truly back. We are a local authority with a big heart and big ambitions. With strength in leadership, we have reshaped our organisation, listened and responded to residents needs, supported community through a pandemic and driven innovation, transformation and high performance. Your support for and commitment to local community is something you should all be proud of. And I can certainly tell you that I'm very proud to be the leader of this fantastic organisation. Let's continue to work together for the good of all and further instill our amazing Team Kavili ethos in everything we do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Your statement is noted. Councillor Whittle, you you've got your hand up. Can I help you? Yes, uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and thank the leader of the authority for um, everything that she has just informed us uh, during what has been a difficult year for uh, absolutely everyone within the county borough. Um, you know, there's no no argument there at all. I'm just wondering whether the um, <clears throat> excuse me, the leader of the authority could give us <clears throat> sorry uh, some indication of uh, when um, there will be s sort of a gradual return to normality at some of the council offices. I've had cause to visit the council offices due to um, issues uh, with my IT, which. Nothing to do with this authority, by the way, all to do with open reach. Um, but um, they are a little bit like the Marie Celeste, the offices. And of course, society is gradually getting back to work. Uh, you, you may have spotted on my Facebook page today that, you know, three of the voluntary organisations that I work for, we are now uh, slowly getting back to some kind of normality. Uh, but of course, I would uh, add that I wouldn't suggest that anybody should put themselves in any danger at all. But I do think that needs, I understand that uh, the leadership is considering reopening or considering reopening the offices sometime in September. Now, I, I do think 16 weeks is rather a long time, and I'm wondering whether there are any plans to bring that a little bit forward, please. Thank you very much. We don't normally allow uh, questions after the leader's statement, but Councillor Marsden, are you happy to respond? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Whittle. Thank you for that. Absolutely. September seems a long way away, doesn't it, at this stage with the easing of uh, restrictions across the, the communities and, and wider. So I think it's important that we're going to review that and look at that and whether or not we look at a phased return gradually through the summer months. You know, it's something that we're going to have to look at, you know, in terms of understanding our agile working policy, as you know, which is what we'd hope to bring forward in September. So it's, it's a matter for us. We will absolutely look at that. And if we are in the position to bring people in earlier, then that's something we will consider doing then. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Leader. Thank you. Thank you both. Moving on to item 10, it's the review of political balance. Councillor Colin Gordon, can you introduce the report, please? Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Madam Mayor, I'm sorry, it's Councillor Preston. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Gordon. Um, um, if you would, would you possibly let me make a statement, please? At this precise moment, Councillor Priest, does it relate yes, to the agenda? If, if, no, if you possibly would, please. Uh, I've got to go anyway. So if you possibly let me make a short statement and I'll go off then. Okay, yes, I'll allow it this once. Thank you. 
fine, thank you. All I want to do is thank um, uh, members of, of the council. It's a great report anyway, Lee, just put that there. They helped me a lot, I did, but um, um, I went back like myself this week. We lost, I lost my younger brother. Um, so, um, I've had a phone call now, so thank you all for your letters and phone calls. Thank you very much. Bye you now. Take care, Councillor Priest. Thank you. On that note, I'll return to Councillor Gordon, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, May. And first of all, congratulations to you on the deputy for your reappointment for the next 12 months and less hope. You will be able to get out and about and do some civic duties in person. Uh, review of political balance. The purpose of the report is to carry out a review of political balance across the authority and the allocation of seats to political groups in accordance with the Section 15 of the Local Government and Housing Act 1989. The Council is required to review the political balance of its committees and determine the allocation in accordance with principles set out in Section 15 of the 1989 Act, namely, A, not all the seats on the body are allocated to the same political group, B, that the majority of seats on the body are allocated to a particular political group if the number of the people belonging to that group represents a majority of the Council's membership, C, Subject to those earlier rules, the number of seats on the ordinary committees of the Council allocated to each group bear the same proportion to the total of all seats allocated as it as is borne by the number of members of that group to the membership of the authority. D. Subject to paragraphs A to C above, that the number of seats on the body which are allocated to each political group bears the same proportion to the number of all the seats on that body as is borne by the number of members of that group to the membership of the authority. An independent council in a group is not according to the principles set out above entitled to seats on committees and is not taken into account for the purposes of the political balance calculations. Even if the political balance was varied by treating the two individual independent members as a group, as explained in paragraph 5.4 of the report, a seat would only become available for a committee of 20 members, as this council does not have committees of 20 members. I move that the recommendation in the report that the council notes the political balance outlined in Appendix 1 to the report, and there has been no change to the general allocation of seats to the committees in accordance with the political balance. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gordon. Members, this report's recommendation is for noting only, but if you have any comments, please indicate now using the hands up button. Please turn your camera and microphone on when called and lower your hand again by clicking on the hands up button when you've finished making your representations. We have no hands raised, so thank you everyone. This report is so noted. Moving on to item 11, and that's to appoint the chair and vice chair and members to serve on the following overview and scrutiny committees until the next annual meeting in accordance with the political balance and to note the senior salary payment to the chairs. Members, I will call on each of the group leaders to move your appointments in turn. Councillor Marsden, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move for Education Scrutiny Committee Vice Chair, Councillor Carol Andrews, Social Services Scrutiny Committee Vice Chair, Councillor Kamina Carmen Bazina, Policy and Resources Scrutiny Committee Chair, Councillor James Pritchard, and Vice Chair, Jez, uh, Councillor Jez Kirby, um, Environment and State Sustainability Scrutiny Committee Chair, Councillor Tudor Davis, and Vice Chair, Councillor Adrian Hussey. Um, Housing and Scru Regeneration Scrutiny Committee Chair John Ridgewell and Vice Chair Councillor Mike Adams. The appointments of members to serve on these committees are stated in the list attached to the subject, attached subject to amendment to the Environment Sustainability Scrutiny, whereas Councillor John Ridgewell will replace Councillor 
Andrew Whitcomb and any other fur further amendments to be provided to committee services following the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Councillor Mann, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, could I just for a moment uh, refer back to the previous discussion? Uh, there is um, a token to what uh, some people refer as no, no normality. Next Thursday in the Council Chamber, the um, Police and Crime Panel, which comes under UK government rules, uh, is now not allowed to meet virtually and has to meet uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. Uh, and there are a grand total of 20 people allowed in the uh, in the meeting. So if you think of that, the chances of us having a council meeting uh, under the present rules are, <laughs> are very remote, I would have thought. But uh, back to what you asked me, yeah, Mayor. Um, Chair of the Education uh, Councillor Theresa Parry and Chair of Social Services, Councillor Donna Cushion. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Councillor Kevin Etheridge, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we've got um, we've got uh, no no uh, no comment, no no appointments necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second for the appointments as stated, please? I'll second if nobody else will. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Mr. Tranter will now take us to the vote. Thank you, members. Oh, yeah. So um, you're going to be voting yeah. on, if you please, um, the chairs and vice chairs of our five scrutiny committees. You'll have a poll uh, coming up in front of you. Um, very yeah. shortly uh, oh. when that comes up if you can please cast your vote oh, and um, i'll give the results after that thank you there we are the poll is up before you now members so it's yes no or abstain please and i'll give you uh, 60 seconds for that please to complete that thank you perhaps while we're waiting um if councillor um, Haas and Oliver can tell me how they wish to vote. I'll note that, please, because you were joining us by telephone, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Councillor Oliver, then? Uh, four. Thank you. <coughs> Pardon. Thank you very much. Councillor yes. Haas? Four. Thank you very much. Mr. Tratter, uh, yes, Councillor Williams, I'm as a guest. I, I have got no voting facility, so I would vote for as well. Thank you very much. I've made a note of that, Councillor Williams. Thank you. Mayor, I think I'm in as the guest as well. I don't have a raise hand facility, so I can't use that. But I voted on the um, form. OK, and that's Councillor Forehead, is it? Yes, Rob. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I've, I, I've made a note of that. There we are then, um, Madam Mayor. Um, there were 57 on the poll, plus uh, the five members who voted um, orally, two abstentions, so the, um, the proposition is carried to appoint the chairs and the vice chairs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Tranter. Members, we note that the senior salary payments will be made to the chairs appointed. Item 12 to appoint the chair and or vice chair and members to serve on the following committees until the next annual meeting and to note the senior salary payment to the chairs marked in accordance with the political balance and as the lists attached. Members, I will call on each of the group leaders to move your appointments in turn. Councillor Marsden, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? Yeah, sorry, I've had a problem with my unmute button then. Um, OK, thank you. Um, Chair of Licensing, Councillor Julian Simmons. Vice Chair, Councillor Walter Williams. Chair of Planning Committee, Councillor Roy Sorales. And Vice Chair, Councillor Elizabeth Aldworth. Remaining Chairs and Vice Chairs and Members are stated in the list attached and as provided to committee services following the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Marsden. Councillor Mann, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, 
just to start with the vacancy on uh, social services scrutiny, um, we are um, proposing that that is left vacant until after the by-election. Uh, and the the other one, I'm not sure if this is the right place to do it, but on the planning committee, we have to lose a seat and Councillor Angel will be standing down from planning. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Councillor Etheridge, can I ask you to move your appointments, please? We've got no change, um, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Etheridge. Uh, do I have a second for the appointments as stated, please? Second, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. So, Mr Tranter, will you now take us to the vote, please? Yes, once again, members, uh, to vote on these appointments, please. The poll will come before you um, shortly. I hope so in any event. And uh, uh, there it is. So if you could vote yes, no or abstain and press the submit button, please. And in the meantime, um, if I could go through uh, Councillor Oliver, please. Four. Yeah. Hi, Councillor Oliver. Would you like to vote on this one, please? Uh, no, yes. yes. Yes, thank sir. you very much. I've noted that. Councillor Haas? Four. Thank you. Councillor Forehead? Rob, the actual form is working for me, so I've ah, voted fantastic. I voted yes. Brilliant. Excellent. OK, there we are. The wonders of technology. Um, Councillor Williams? Four. Four. Thank you very yeah. much. And uh, any other members having difficulties? Councillor Gordon's got his hand raised. Councillor Gordon, please. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm getting a red alert up on mine saying something went wrong. Try again. I tried again, but it's not happening. So I'll vote for. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So therefore, uh, Madam Mayor, um, the appointments are carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chanter. Members, we note that senior salary payments will be made to the Chairs of the Governance and Audit Committee, Licensing Committee and the Planning Committee. So noted. Item 13, to note that the Chair and Vice Chair of the Governance and Audit Committee will be appointed at the first meeting following the annual meeting of Council. Members, this is so noted. Item 14, to consider constitute subcommittees, working parties, panels, boards and members to service on them and to appoint, nominate representatives to serve on outside bodies. I'm not sure who's um, going to move the membership, so um, could somebody raise their hand for me, please? Uh, I'll, I'll move, Chair. Right, I've got Councillor Mann and Councillor Councillor Cushing, and there was another voice as well there as well who's, who I uh, couldn't catch. Could I say there are no changes, Madam Mayor? Thank you, Councillor Mann. Okay, so we've got a proposal and a seconder. So I will take us. Um, I'll pass this over to Mr. Tranter, to, who will take us to the vote. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, once again, members, the poll will be before you shortly. And uh, if you could vote, please, on the appointments um, to the various uh, committees. Excuse, excuse me, can I just, sorry, I got my hand up to speak. Yes, I was just going to call you in, Councillor Ellsbury. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, just before we go to the vote, um, we're, we're voting on this. Uh, there is a section here about the town centre managers or Town Centre Management Committee, um, they haven't met in over two years. Uh, I, I I don't know why we're voting for this if we're not going to have meetings. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. We haven't had a meeting since Andrew Highway left. Could someone tell me, um, is, is this committee still going? Uh, are we ever going to meet again? Um, because we've had nothing at all. I've asked questions. I've never had a reply. Um, perhaps, Madam May, if I could assist. Um, Councillor Ellsbury, could I um, perhaps get someone to contact you outside of the meeting um, so they can explain what's going on? Clearly, COVID would have had a, uh, an impact the last year. 
Um, but you said it was two years it's not met for. Yeah, um, it's over two years. I'll, I'll find out who's responsible for it and get that officer to, to, to get back to you, if I may. Is that okay? Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, Thank so I didn't want to put a spanner in the works. It's just we haven't met and I don't know what's going on. So we, we're voting for something that we, we're not actually doing. So Absolutely. that's fine, no problem. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you. mate. Thank you. Councillor Mann, you've got your hand raised as well. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think that's a re very relevant point. There's no point in um, uh, appointing people to committees if they're not meeting. And uh, obviously, COVID has had an impact. But uh, is there any reason why that committee wouldn't have met on, on the um, uh, virtually the same as lots of other committees have? This is Harry. You want to, to respond to that? Yes, thank you. Notwithstanding what uh, Rob has already advised members, uh, an officer will contact you um, uh, with specific details. But obviously the COVID uh, pandemic has affected our ability to uh, operate this, this uh, meeting as, as well as others. Um, but as part of our COVID recovery plan, members will be aware that our town centres are a particular focus for us. And certainly I would anticipate that that meeting will be reconvening shortly. But again, uh, as Rob has already indicated, an officer will um, get in touch uh, to discuss specifics. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Harry. Councillor Etheridge, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The, the, the same applies to Blackwood Town Centre Management Group. It hasn't met for about uh, 18 months, two years, and um, it is disappointing because we could have had virtual meetings, but uh, none of us have been contacted at all. And um, we await the officers' comments. Thank you. Madam Mayor, put my hand up. I'd love you to see. Madam Mayor. Sorry, I was on mute. I was talking away to you. No, I couldn't see your hand, Councillor James. Um, would you like to speak now? Yeah. Could uh, could Mr. Tranter make sure he emails all members with the reply to uh, Councillor Ellsbury? Because we're all on Town Centre Management Committee and we would certainly like to know what's happening going forward. And I'm sure... Uh, the residents and the traders, certainly within my town, would also like to know. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other... Oh, Councillor Morgan, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, yeah, ju just to say, I mean, the, I, I don't believe it was two years, but, but Councillor Ellsbury may, may well be right. Um, uh, they were stopped due, due, due to the pandemic. Um, we are aiming to... <clears throat> um, involve the the um, traders far, far more in these events going forward um, with the ambition to actually go out into the town centres. Now, now, they could have been held um, remotely, but there was very little take up with traders when we, when we were holding the meetings uh, in, in the offices. Um, so I think there, there would have been even less take up um, if we were to be holding those uh, meetings virtually. So the decision was taken to, to, to suspend them um, and, until we can meet again in, in person. Um, so whether we will now ha have to um, uh, adjust into the pandemic, whether we will restart them in, in looking um, uh, virtually, but the intention certainly is to restart them and not just restart them, but to take them into the individual town centres so that we can invite more traders uh, and make it a much more town centric uh, meeting than, than than it was because it um, we had very few traders taking part in. Those <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Morgan. Um, I've got Councillor Whittle and Councillor Mann with their hands up. If you can just make your comments quickly and then we can take it to the vote. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I, I wonder whether the membership of these committees could be reviewed. I speak as a member of Penrod to Kenneth and Glyn Ward. 
uh, we're not included in the town centre for Cardiffilia, and yet it is our town centre. Uh, probably similar for the St James members, they would regard it as their town centre, and even the Aber Valley members. And uh, sometimes it's embarrassing as a councillor walking around my town centre, and members of the public and traders ask me uh, or tell me what's happening with certain uh, buildings and certain empty plots of land, and I have genuinely no idea. So we need, we all need to be included. If it's only one rep, please. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mann, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Morgan may well be right, and it's disappointing that there isn't a better attendance, but obviously uh, people running businesses are generally very busy people, and uh, virtual meetings are often easier to attend uh, because it doesn't involve uh, travelling. So it may well have been, had we tried, that we'd have had a better turnout. And could I could I suggest, uh, it's not up to me, but uh, maybe it is worth trying a couple of virtual meetings to see if uh, there is a decent response. Thank you. And uh, the last hand is uh, Councillor Cushion. If you could make it uh, fairly quick, we'll move on to the vote. Thank you. Don't worry, I will make it quick, actually. Um, Perhaps it's just that they haven't got the technology to actually attend virtual meetings. Um, I agree with Colin that maybe we could try it, but if they don't have the technology, um, you know, they can't attend. Thank you. And I'll pass us back to Mr Chanter for the vote. Thank you. OK, members, um, only uh, 23 of you have voted so far, so if you haven't voted, um, can you please uh, vote now? And uh, Councillor Oliver, would Four. you like to vote on this? Four. Thank you very much. Councillor Haas? Four. Thank you very much. Councillor Forehead? Voted. Lovely. Councillor Gordon? Uh, four. Four. Chair, um, the same thing is happening. Something went wrong, so uh, please try again. So I don't know. And I think... Um, five, five, Finally, Councillor Williams. Oh. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other members have a difficulty? Yes, please. Uh, Councillor Price. Councillor Price, thank you. How would you like to vote? Four, please. As well. Councillor Gale. Yep. Four. Councillor Goff. And Councillor Goff. Four. Four. Thank you, Councillor Goff. I've made a note of those. Therefore, um, Madam Mayor, the uh, the vote is is carried. There were five abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chanter, um, and thank you, members. That was our final agenda item for the evening. So we've reached the conclusion of the meeting. I would like to thank everyone for attending this evening's annual meeting of Caerphilly County Borough Council, and I declare the meeting closed. And you may hang up. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor.